So now you have your basic qigong. You should really practice, really persevere with this, even if it gets strenuous, even if you feel, oh, God, I can't stand another one of these shakes. Persevere with it. Really, I can assure you, the benefits to you will be so great, you won't imagine such great good health as I have, as I have found and as everyone that I've given this, this simple, ex simple but difficult exercise to have found the benefits are really, really great to your health and simply to your everyday living. So now we begin the complete Yang Cheng Fu Tai Ji Chuan form. There's no easy way to do this. I found over the years through doing various things that I've always come back to the traditional way of teaching it, that is me just standing in front of you and doing it. I've tried mirrors, I've tried doing it in reverse mode, and people seem to just get confused. However, I will do the first set of movements called grasping swallow's tail in the reverse direction so that you can look as if you were looking into a mirror, and that might be of some help. But I won't do the whole form for that. This is all very well when I'm doing movements that, that, are, that are facing the north. When I start turning this way and doing them this way, people tend to get confused doing that. So up up until the, the, the posture of press, I'll do it also in the reverse mode. And I'll also do it with back towards you so that you, you can at least have something to follow for the first few movements. We begin again in, with getting the correct posture, feet together, and open and open. So you have parallel footing and shoulder width apart. The feet are not scrunched under this time. They're just flat, just flat on the floor. The hands are by your sides, slightly flexed. The wrists are slightly flexed by your hands. That is, they are a yang hand. And the armpits are open. That call, that's called opening up, up the qua. The tongue is resting on the hard palate. The shoulders are relaxed and rounded. The chest is slightly concave, totally relaxed. The first movement, preparation. Raise your hands up to chest height and notice that the wrists are relaxing all the way up as you breathe in. Now, when I say breathe in and breathe out, I don't mean you have to breathe in all the way up and all the way down. When I say breathe in, I mean you breathe in somewhere on that movement and you breathe out somewhere on that movement. You don't have to be going... <laughs> all the way up and all the way down. So you breathe in somewhere on the way up and somewhere on the way down. Now this is incorrect. See how I did that and then raised my hand? That's called a dead movement. There will be, there will be nowhere in the form where you'll be doing a movement like this. That's a dead movement. There must be yin and yang happening all the way through your Taiji form. So if you're doing a movement like like a pushing type movement, it will never be like this, ever. If you see anyone doing Taiji like this, walk out of the class. It's a movement like this. It slowly releases yang energy all the way through. This shaped hand is called a yin-shaped hand. It is now full of yang energy. It's opposite. The only real work that I can do now is bah! Now it's full of yin energy. That's a yang-shaped hand. The only real work that that shape ha shaped hand now can do is bah! like so, which causes your sleeves to fall down. This, by the way, is a traditional Chinese suit. I had it made for me in China. And they traditionally had these stupid sleeves. Their reason being that they didn't want people to see what their hands were doing when they were doing their form. Because keep in mind, this, this is the most deadly martial arts form of any martial art ever invented. And so, so when you buy, when you or have this made, I had it made by one of my friend's mothers in China. She made it in the traditional mode with extremely long sleeves. And it can be a little annoying at times, so I thought I'd wear this traditional outfit. I don't usually wear uniforms, but for this video I thought I'd just wear it. All right, now, breathe in. Notice how the wrists are relaxing all the way up. The wrists only come to shoulder height. The top of the wrist, that is here, only comes to shoulder height. Now you breathe out somewhere on the downstroke, and you notice that I don't go like this. 
I'm going to leave the fingers where they are and push my wrists down underneath my fingers. And you notice that the wrists are releasing all the way down. So it's in-breath, out. That's your opening movement. The eyes look ahead all the time. Never ever look down or do not close your eyes. Now I'll give this next movement to you in two parts, left and right hands, but they both of course happen together. Now your left hand is going to come up and away from your body as you breathe in, keeping the wrist in your center. Do not do this or just this. Never bend your elbow. See how the elbows are that much bent? Keep them that much bent, which means you've got to bring your arm out to the front. See how the arms don't go like this at all. They stay that amount of bend. The left wrist is in the center at this point. On an in-breath, you just keep that circle, that arc, going out to the left and flex your left hand lightly into the northwest corner. This, by the way, the direct is the north, south, east, west. You notice the hand. See how the hand is not floppy, it's not stretched. It's just called a tile palm hand. Notice how the fingers are like the slats on a Chinese house or, or any, well, any, any tiles really. They're sort of layered. That's how your hand should be based pretty well, except when you're doing punches and things and stuff. But that's how your hand should be for the whole form. Not dead, not too tense, but alive internally. And that's how your hand is when it comes out to the left. That's an out, that's, that's an in-breath, just an in-breath for the time being. And we'll do the out-breath. See, that movement, it's very hard to do the breathing because the move, movements all connect into each other. So the out-breath is actually going to be the next move, you see. But just while you're learning it, of course, you can go in-breath and out-breath. Now, at the very same time, your right hand does much the same move. It does an arc like this and across your chest. So it does the same thing. It relaxes in-breath. All the way up. Remember, it's relaxing all the way up. It's not just this hand by the same token. It's not just going, that's dead hand, you see? It relaxes slowly all the way up until it gets to its zenith. Then it's fully relaxed. Then it swings out to the left, and now it flexes because it's starting to come down. It just slowly flexes because it's starting to come down now. The same token, this right hand slowly relaxes all the way up, out to the northeast corner, in breath, and now the wrist comes across your chest. The wrist is in your dead center, about upper chest height here. Notice that the elbow is not up like this at any time. You must drop your elbows below your shoulders at all times. This keeps your shoulders relaxed. The elbows will never be like this. Even when doing punches like this, the elbows are held down. So that hand comes out and across your chest on an out breath. So that's right in your center. And you notice the arm hasn't gone like this. It has stayed that amount of bend. See how it comes out and just across your chest. There's a tiny amount of bend, of course, but it's not bent greatly like this. You must protect your garden, they say in Chinese. So the further away this hand is, the more protection you have. This, and you have no protection. So doing that move together, I'll do them both together now. In breath, out breath, in breath, out breath. Now at this point, see where the alignment of the two hands. There's a point just here called the dragon mouth point. It's colon four in acupuncture. Those two points should be in a lateral line. If you brought your hands together, they should go, the thumb, the thumb, this here, should go into each other. If it goes like this, for instance, and misses, then your hands are out of alignment. That both hands should be on a lateral line in front of you with those two points at this point. That's the first movement. 
I'll wait till I get to the end of Grasping Swallow's Tail and then show you the whole thing in reverse mode. That's called ARN, or push to the left. A-R-N, left. Although this whole, whole set of movements is called Grasping Swallow's Tail, and this was actually your original Taiji, and then successive masters added to the, your Taiji, um, they all have their individual names as well, and individual applications. Now from here, on that particular outbreath, this is where we bend the knees. Your legs are straight, not locked, but just straight, but they're not bent at the moment. From here, on that outbreath, you're going to bend your knees down, both knees, like in that Qigong stance, but you'll put your weight onto your left leg. So as your left hand is going to flex and comes down, you're going to place your weight down onto your left leg, and as your hand gets down to about waist height, you start to turn your body to the right hand corner, the northeast. Let your left hand slowly now change to a yin shape. Turn your right toes 45 degrees only to the right. Now you'll notice that my whole body has turned to the right. My head has turned to the right, but my eyes are looking here towards the north. That's what you'd say. Your eyes stay where they were. So you're looking out the corner of your eyes. Both hands are directly over the top of each other. Both palms are directly over the top of each other at this point. I'll show, that, show it to you to the front just to show you what the arms look like. But you've turned to the corner. Elbows down, remember. Qua, open. The weight is now on your left leg. At this point, you should be able to pick that right foot up easily. You shouldn't have to, for instance, go push back and then pick it up. There should be no weight on that right leg. So I'll do those, those first two movements together. I'm doing the first movements in greater detail than I will in, in, the, in the successive movements, simply because th this is the epitome of Tai Ji, the grasping swallow's tail. And you'll understand how I teach and how to learn from this tape as I, as I do these first few movements. Then there'll be no need to really go over it in such great detail later on, because you can simply, of course, stop the tape and then go back over it and do it. In-breath. Out. In. Over to the left. Slowly flex your left hand down. Exhale. Go in at the waist and let your right toes turn by 45 degrees to the right. And the eyes are looking out the corner of the eyes onto the camera. Now from this point, oh by the way, your bum is tucked in. Don't do it like this. See, look in a mirror and make sure you're not leaning like this. Make sure when you get, same as the qigong stance, when you bend your waist and bend your legs, or go in at the waist, you must go in at the waist when you bend your legs. See, I'll do it to the side here so that you can see what I'm doing. This is incorrect. See how I'm leaning backwards? When I bend my knees, I must go in at the waist. In other words, you keep your head straight and just go straight down, like as if there's a little chair here under your buttocks, and you're just going to sit straight down. See how the back remains vertical, rather than going like this.